guys, Kev here at Kev RC. Today I'm going to show you how to replace diffs in your X-Max. Parts you're going to need if you go for standard diffs are 7779 ring gear, same part front and rear, 7777, that's the front one, and the rear one 7778. Also, if you want to make your diffs last a little bit longer, there's a little shim trick what you can do. It works on your standard diffs the best. Little plastic shim that come inside these packs. They work perfect. I've tried to, just to get this camera off of here. If you look here on my computer, I've tried these diffs and I've still stripped them. They have lasted a little bit longer, but for what the, for the price of what they cost, I don't think they're really worth it, and I would just stick with these parts here. There is another diff coming coming out soon. I'll just show you here these ones from Kershaw Designs. Sixty nine dollars for both, and I think we're going to give them a go. They're not out just yet. due mid-October. Ah, it is mid-October. So I'm going to order myself a set of them and stick them in the X-Max and then I can give it a review and let you know how good they are. Right, so let's get in the workshop and rip this old X-Max to bits. This one here has been clicking for a while now. This is the old x maxis one. Um, just going to change out the ring and pinion. Really easy to get the diff out. Two screws that hold the bumper on at the top here. So whip, whip those screws out. Then if you turn it over. Uh, Four screws on the bottom of this plate, so you rip them out. And that whole lot here will just come off like that. Get that plate off there. Right, diff cover, there's five screws. So I'll go ahead and remove them. Right, that cover will come straight off like that. And there's your diff. This one here has actually got a, um, let's try and get out to focus. Focus, focus. Right, this one here has got a HD diff on it. Um, I don't know if you can see that on the photo, but it's got teeth missing there. Just there, she's got teeth missing. She's been clicking for a while, so. Right, so we've got this main diff unit here. It's worth wrapping a bit of rag or something around there when you hold it so you don't cut your hands. Whip that centre bolt out of, out of the drive cup thing. That'll slide off like that. And then go ahead and remove the four screws that hold the crown wheel to the actual diff housing. Just 
pull the crown wheel off. Meh. Ooh, look at that gasket, that looks horrible. Mm, might get away with reusing it though. Right, so you've got your new ring gear there. Uh, I'm not going to put this gasket back on as manky. So I've got another one here, going to stick that on there. I'll just go ahead and pop that gasket back on the casing here. And get your ring gear. Actually, first, get this thing back on there. You need this. Don't forget about the rubber bearing that goes in there, the rubber oil seal thing. And then gently slide that over there. Just like that. And then line your ring gear up with the holes in the casing. And then you can pop your screws back in there. Eel grossness. All right, and then nip that last bit up by hand. Last little bit, always do that by hand if you're tapping into well, any, any screws on this RC or any other RC for that matter, I wouldn't do them up with power tools. It's so easy just to rip the, the threads out of the screws. All right, that's on there. That doesn't look good. Can you see that bubbling in there? That's oozing out through the metal. Oh well. Turns, yep, turns fine. All right, get your pinion gear and pop that back into the X Max here. Plomp. And what you want to do here, the idea is, it's, it's, this is my theory at least, is to get this gear closer to that gear in there by pushing the whole diff unit over this way. And you can do that by putting a shim on that side of the bearing. Uh, uh, I had one laying somewhere. Right, this is a um, one of the plastic shims that come with this set here. And really, these are meant to go inside the diff, but you can sort of force that over with a bit of persuasion. Force that over that side there. Pop the bearing back on, and your drive cup. So what that's going to do now, by having that little spacer in there, that's going to force the diff further over that way. Another thing that you really want to do before you put all that back in back together is make sure that there's no metal teeth and stuff in this grease. 
If there's any 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 teeth or any bits of metal and stuff in there, that's going to chew up your new gears. Um, for the purpose of this video, though, I'm just I'm just showing you how you go about changing the actual diff. So I'm not going to spend too long cleaning this stuff out. And this diff's not actually going to stay in there that long anyway, because as soon as the Kershaw ones come out, it's going to get one of them in there. So I'm not that overly bothered if it doesn't last that long. But if you do it, if you do it properly, just get all that grease out of there. Get any old metal teeth out, any any filings. Give it a good wash out with some bearing cleaner or carburetor spray or anything like that. Make sure that's perfectly clean in there, and put some new grease in. Right, so you've got your diff all back assembled and you've cleaned it out in there with, with all your stuff. Hopefully you've done a much better job than what I've done in there. Get yourself some general purpose grease. This is the stuff that I use, but any, any general purpose grease, car grease, hasn't got to be for modelling. Just give that a nice little coating around, around the, the ring gear like that. Then align your drive shafts into the cups. If you're doing the front diff, by the way, then you'll have to remove the shocks. You don't have to, but it makes it easier. On the rear, the shocks are on the other side, so they don't get in the way. So pop that back in there like that. Get your nice and clean diff cover that you've cleaned out. Not better than this. I've not really cleaned that properly. Stick that back on there. So whip your screws back in, short one in the middle, and all the other screws. Don't over tighten these. If you over tighten them and you can't get them tight anymore, then that's one of the main reasons that you're going to kill a diff, like that one there. See? That one's too tight, I just tripped it with this. Don't do it. Don't use this for doing stuff up. I've just stripped that one in there. So now what's probably going to happen now is that diff won't last long at all. Especially because I didn't clean it out properly in there. And I've stripped the thread in this cut this housing, but I think I've stripped that before, that's been stripped for a while, but look, it's just spinning. That's bad. All the other ones are going tight. And go ahead and whip your bumper back on. Wrap off of there. Guys, when you're doing this on your one, spend a bit of time. I'm just I'm just doing a video to show you how it's done. So I'm not gonna bore you with all the cleaning process, but spend a bit of time and, and do a nice job of it, because the better you look after your X Max, the better it's gonna last you. You start bodging stuff, it's not gonna last long, it's gonna go wrong. That's probably why a lot of guys that complain about the X Max owner's not very strong. They're not giving it the proper maintenance. And if you're just going to bodge a diff in there like this, like I have, it's not going to last long. Which is when we see it in action, you'll probably see it clicking. Probably not that long after. Right, get that in there. Get your screws back in there. Right, get your screws back in here. Right, there you go. That is how you replace a diff in the X-Max. Front diff, exactly the same. You've got a different part number for the pinion. Uh, the ring gear is the same, but you got you want to remove, take one of the shocks out. If you take both shocks out, it's even easier because you can get that lot all out. 
So there you go, guys. If you like the video, subscribe. If you don't <laughs>